Over the past few decades, a new fitness craze called CrossFit has taken the world by storm. Instead of focusing on routine exercises like running or walking, CrossFit gives people a holistic workout that provides a varied assortment of different movements at a high intensity. Dustin Moore is the owner of CrossFit Johnson City, a local gym that operates out of peak fitness. Moore believes a varied assortment of different exercises tends to be more beneficial than a series of monotonous ones. Your body, we're made to adapt. So the idea is to keep using these uh, effective and functional movements, but never allow your body the opportunity to settle in and adapt to that. CrossFit is also known for its rigor, something that Chase Tipton, a three-year veteran of the exercise, appreciates. First thing that really got me into CrossFit first was I worked out for a little over a year, and then um, I mean I you know I liked obviously where fitness took me, making me look better and stuff. But then once I actually did my first CrossFit workout, it was like I'd never got my butt kicked so hard in my life ever. Like I've never been I've never been that defeated. So it's kind of nice to to do something that really put me in a state of like I'm really not that good. And so it's kind of good, you know, to have a sport or a way of fitness that made me feel almost inadequate to push myself past, you know, where I was before. So. Moore said that offering an assortment of exercises keeps exercise fun and prevents muscles from becoming overworked. People who attend CrossFit classes at Peak Fitness perform a series of different exercises that are programmed by CrossFit instructors. Exercises can include squats, pull-ups, weight lifts, and other strength-based and cardiovascular exercises. Ultimately, Moore said that CrossFit involves burning the most amount of calories and working the most muscle groups in the shortest amount of time. Despite the benefits, CrossFit has also been the source of recent controversy. Detractors claim that the exercise can sometimes be a bit too intense, leading to a high rate of injury. However, Moore said that some of this controversy stems from the fact that there isn't a lot of centralized authority by CrossFit headquarters over how affiliated gyms organize workouts. You will walk in CrossFit Johnson City versus Thunder Valley CrossFit or CrossFit East 10 or CrossFit Melee, and you'll have a very unique experience because um, other than the original uh, training and certificate and affiliation process, there's not a lot of regulation on what we do, which, okay. is, which is great in some ways and, um, and, of course, bad in others because there's, the quality is very individualized. So you can walk in and have a really poor CrossFit experience and then go a mile down the road and have a great CrossFit experience. Gyms like CrossFit Johnson City pay an affiliate fee to use a CrossFit brand. But this doesn't guarantee that the CrossFit experience will be the same in different gyms. Dwayne Williams is an associate professor in the ETCU Department of Physical Therapy. He said that just like any sport, people who practice CrossFit need to recognize their physical limitations. No matter what they're doing for physical activity, there's a physiological range. And it's different for everyone. And I don't care a particular sport that you're doing or whatnot, depending on your body type, how much training you've done, how well you're doing it, what's your technique, everyone can get hurt. If you do too little, you're not going to get a good training effect, and so that'll affect your performance. If you do too much, you get injured. So you got to find that happy range. Having served as a coach himself, Tipton said that good coaching often involves being receptive to the physical limits of an individual, especially if they're trying CrossFit for the first time. Being open-minded. I think that's the biggest thing that I could ever tell a new CrossFit coach, or even like a CrossFit coach who's been coaching for a while, is have an open mind. Because it's so, it's so hard to be a good coach and to develop athletes if you have a closed mind about things. Like if you have this straight and narrow path about this is how you do this and this is how you do that, it's, you know, you're going to help some people, but you're, you're not going to help nearly as many people as if you have an open mind about it. 